Hello, hello. I'm doing good. I'm oh, good. good, 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 good. I'm so happy to see you guys on this wonderful first day of February. Can you believe it? We're on the second day, second month of 2021. We're on the second month of like 2021. We finally like pushed 2020 out the way, got it out the way. And on top of that, we are finally in black history month finally thank you lord jesus i'm so excited we have finally ushered in some amazing people of god like you know martin luther king maya angelou you know what i'm saying harry tubman i'm excited because those are people who have ushered us in into the great of history can i get an amen amen for the people (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So before we begin this program and before we do anything else, I am thankful because Evangelist Patricia Fowler is going to lead us into prayer. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> so let's begin this whole process, Evangelist. Let's do this. Dear Lord, we come right now just to say thank you, God, for allowing us to come and have another uh, live show, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity. We don't take it for granted, nor do we take it lightly. We ask that you would keep the airways clear so that if anyone wants to call in with questions or comments, that they can do so. We thank you for our two guests today. And um, I'm just glad that they are here with us to share the things that they are doing in the community and just as young adults. And we just thank you for this time. We bless you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And so before we begin, I'm so thankful that we have been joined by these two amazing guests, Mr. Anthony Wilson from the Fresh Program. Not only that, he is a paralegal. And I'm going to kind of let him kind of introduce himself because he does have so many accolades. And I said that. <laughs> you like how I said that? <laughs> Aren't you like how I said that? A little <laughs> So I'm going to let you introduce yourself um, on the little accolades. Um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself to everybody in the audience. But before you do that, um, if you would like to call on in and have any questions for our guests, you could do that at one 855 And Mr. Anthony Wilson, please let our audience know who you are today. Well, I want to first of all say thank you for having me on the show. I always try to get out to the community and uh, society as to what uh, we do at the Fresh Program. Uh, Also, Cynthia and Patricia, I want to introduce a young man, Mr. Alonzo Turner Bay. And I know this was unexpectedly, but he's with me. She said, uh, so uh, I want to, I definitely, I'm I'm not going to have him be long, but I want him to detail his story uh, was uh, what happened with him and how and how he's adjusted. So the Fresh Program is is assisting him in his return. So in a nutshell, I'm a pro league investigator. I was wrongly convicted 30, 30 years ago. Uh, got uh, through the grace of God, got myself out. Um, went to went to Howard, graduated from Howard, obtained my certification, started my own consultant services where I started helping uh, individuals. Uh, who were wrongly convicted, you know, get out of prison. Um, right now, I'm writing a book on my story about what I did in getting those and helping those individuals come out. The Fresh Program was inspired by. Oh, I think, are we having a problem with Mr. Anthony's no, connection? Think. Yes. No, maybe. Are we having problems with Mr. Anthony's connection? Yeah, we are because he was he was some, somewhere where he thought the connection was good, but obviously it's not. 
<laughs> well, we're just going we're, we're just going to wait until he returns. Until he returns and then he can just go ahead and fill us in when he gets back. Right. Um I mean, what, I'm going to let you in. your post um, Are when you, you back? Live to share it. Did it not share? No. I mean, I don't even see it posted at all. What? Didn't you just, you posted it a few minutes ago? Yes, I did. But I don't see it at all. My my post, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're still on. Yeah, I mean, I know we're still on. I'm just saying I don't see the post on Facebook. Yes. Yes, we're still we're still live, everybody. We are. Okay. Continue. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so where 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 did I where did I get cut off at when I got frozen? Up? Uh, we were wrongfully wrongfully convicted. Sorry. <laughs> these, these are these. Sorry, guys. This is what happens online. <laughs> okay. So to make to make to make a long story short. Um, I'll I'll discuss you know what happened with me 30 years ago, how I, how I how I went to law school, graduated from Howard, and now I help individuals who've been wrongly convicted get out of prison. Um, I started the Fresh program. The Fresh program was was started based on seeing how society gave up on our youth, and so Fresh came about, and it and it stands for fully restoring every son's hope, and so. As we as we as we do the show, you get you you can call in, you can ask me any questions, and I can answer them from there. You know what? You're doing great, great, grand things. I'm gonna let um, and now I'm gonna let Miss Evangelist Patricia Fowler introduce our next guest. You know, yeah, who is Miss Nikki Styles? Miss Nikki Styles is a personal stylist. She's the owner of the street brand Young and Done. She created this brand to represent young entrepreneurs. Young and Done stands for Determined, Optimistic, Next Level Entrepreneurs. This business was created in October of 2020. And Miss Nikki says this brand is the brand to be on the lookout for because it's on the <laughs> rise. So y'all need to hit Miss Nikki Styles. Yeah. <laughs> gear. <laughs> Yes, yeah. like you said, um, I am, well, my name is Nikki Brown, also known as Miss Nikki Styles. Yep, that's me. Um, I did create this brand all of 2020. I worked on this brand from the beginning of the year until October. I actually had um, a brand before I started Young and Done. It was called Cupcake Couture, and it was great. I had a huge fashion show. It was sold out. It was great. But I just wasn't passionate about that brand anymore. So I was like, okay, I want something different. I really wanted a brand that, that brand was more so like high fashion. And don't get me wrong, I'm still into high fashion. But the everyday me is into like streetwear. And I really wanted a brand that was for men and women. So one day I was in the car and me and my mom were talking. And she was just like, you know what? You should make a brand and like really, you know, take your brand to the next level. Like, you know, talking to young people about starting their own brand and like you know starting her own business at a young age she was like she came up with the name young and done and it just went from there and i just see my hat says young and done that's on the website but um yes so i started young and done it's for men and women and it's doing very well everything is super exclusive very trendy up to up to fashion it's so in and i love this brand um i'm also a personal stylist like i said so i've worked with um a couple like singers you know things like that so um yeah just really just taking my brand to the next level so trying to get to that celebrity status that's the next goal for me so yeah that's what i'm doing and i'm 23 years old wow I am so excited to be <laughs> here. This is like thank you, know, you to have you as a young entrepreneur and yes. be able to have somebody that um, you know is imp- impressionable, you know, to <laughs> uh, our youth, you know, and those yeah. who are young adults. How about that, young adults? Yeah, young adult. Um, yep, <laughs> young adults. Because um, that's what we want is, and I think. Um, because it reflects on 
both the Fresh program and, and also to you, Nikki Brown. This is, I think, the first question. Um, how do you think and just uh, overall look at the Black history right now? Um, what else can we as, um, you know, Black America, what can we do to continue to really reflect on, you know, ourselves to improve our communities, but especially our disparaging communities? What can we continue to do, you know? Um, um, I would say I definitely would have to piggyback off of what my brand stands for. I think the Black community has always been stereotyped, I'll say that, um, that, you know, we don't graduate college and we never, we always come from single parent homes and, you know what I'm saying, it's just always a stereotype that we don't do nothing with our lives and all this other stuff. And I just want to change the stereotype. So I feel like let's, change what America look, looks at us as. So I noticed that a lot of young people my age and even younger are really starting to put themselves on a platform to show that I'm young. It don't matter what my background was, what I came up from, but I'm not going to let my background determine my story. And I'm going to show you guys that I can take my brand to the next level. There's so many Black-owned brands right now on the rise and it's drawing attention. So it's like, okay, I'm going to take this small business into the next level. So it's like, we're using, I say we need to start using our platform to show the positive side of the Black community, not so much as a narrative and a negative that was shown on TV or everywhere else on the news. Like we need to show, okay, Black people are doing good in our community. Not just, you know, with selling clothes or selling products, stuff like that. Like, okay, I might've went to jail, but guess where I'm at now? Now I'm working in corporate or now I got my own business doing great. So it's all about, I think we should use our platform, not for bad, but let's change the narrative into good. Yeah. And I think that's positive. I think uh, that a lot of people think that just because um, of what they see on TV or mm -hmm. hear on the news or what they, you know, reflect um, that yeah. that's what they think about, you know, Black America. And I, and I don't think yeah. that's correct. I think that, you know, I think that they believe that that's what we are as minorities. And I don't think that that's the reflection of who we are you know and it's um, not I mean even like I was just talking to one of my friends recently and like um she's you know her family's from Ghana and you know Nigeria and things like that and you know growing up I'm not African you know what I'm saying I was born in America like my parents aren't you know I'm sure like our history is like that but um you know even growing up on TV all I see is you know Africa is just this run down poor area and that's the image I had in my head of Africa, but now that I'm older, I see Africa is beautiful. Like they have riches. It's a beautiful place. Like I want to visit there. Like it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And it's like, okay, like let's, and like, I see a lot of people are starting to change that narrative. Like Africa is not what they've shown you guys. I mean, yes, there are those poor areas there, you know, and we definitely want to help those areas to get better, but it overall is a beautiful country. Like the whole, you know what I'm saying? The whole continent stuff, but that is a beautiful area, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I wanna change our narrative for the black community as a whole. Like we need to start pushing positive. And also like a big part of me, what helped me to where I'm at now is my parents. Like I wanna encourage parents to push their kids, whether you're a single parent, you're married, like push your kids. Like it makes such a difference when you push your kids in the right direction and encourage them to go after their dreams. You know what I'm saying? So I think that also plays a big part as well. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I, I like what Nikki said. And the, the thing that I teach our youth during, during the course of our workshops is about perception. And mm -hmm. perceptions can sometimes cloud their judgments and their visions. And so they thinking that because they see the way a certain rapper lives or a superstar lives, that that's how mm -hmm. it is. But they really don't know that it's a lot more that comes behind that. And so I always teach them to always be yourselves so you can become trendsetters and trailblazers, you know? Exactly. Agree. I really agree with that. So. And that's good. I'm glad that you said that, you know, um, that being a trailblazer and, and being a trendsetter. And so what are basic ways that we can continue to uplift and embrace um, Black 
history now, you know, because I know that there were such trailblazers, you know, Barack Obama was, a, you know, such a trailblazer, you know, we know that um, Mayu Angelo, she was such a trailblazer, but how can we continue to find ways that we can continue to uplift and embrace, you know, Black history now in this year, you know, in these these years, you know, 2020, 2021, knowing the conditions that we are in um, here, you know, and, and tips in which we can show um, our youth today. Um, I would definitely say, uh, going back to us about using your platform. So I know during this month, um, a lot of people like to do, um, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? They like to do a lot of things. So like with fashion, with their paintings, um, just different things. Social media is such a huge platform and just like that thing can go viral. So you can, um, recreate a look that, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, my angel would have done, you know, recreate a piece or, do a, a, like a type of poetry along her lines, you know, just something to keep it going to like, let these people know that like, okay, like we're not gonna let our black history die down. So I think social media is a great platform to use that in my opinion. So definitely for me, I would use like my fashion, so. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I really do. It's, it's like positive that. and I think the one thing that we have to remember today is just because back then or years ago, things might've been bad or were real negative, we, we, we don't have to be that. We, we, we can mm -hmm. make the change. Just because yeah. someone's parent was an alcoholic don't mean that person is going to be an alcoholic. You change the cycle. Mm -hmm. You make the dynamics different. You do something different. And people may say, that's weird or odd. That's good be because it's different. Don't be like everybody else. I, I mm -hmm. don't want to be like anybody else but myself who I am. So I think as Black people, we need to strive to just be who we are and do what we know that's in us to do, whether people agree or disagree. You always gonna have somebody disagree with you if you if you're doing every single thing in life right, and even if you're doing it wrong, somebody's still gonna have something to say. So we just have to strive to make it better, regardless of the shortcomings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was just telling somebody the other day about what my father told me when I was a young man. He said, "Son." Whether they're talking good or bad about you, you're being talked about. So just be just appreciate it that you're being talked about. <laughs> so. Yeah. At least you're being talked about. You know? Right. Exactly. At least you're being talked about. Um, and that's a part of life. They talked about Jesus. That, you know? <laughs> come on. Um, don't forget to you're listening to Mix Station Radio um, and got into a good heart. At, um, you can still call in at one 493 And you're listening to Nikki Brown um, and also to Anthony Wilson, um, two amazing uh, people. Um, they're they're awesome. We're, we're actually listening to both of them. You know, and it's funny that you both have said that, but um, about you know, trailblazing and, and, you know, how these conditions have made and uplifting embraces of, you know, Black history. And, and like you said, people can definitely talk about you, can talk about certain things in your life and, you know, at least they're talking about you. And I have to piggyback off of, you know, uh, Barack Obama. They've said horrible things about him and even said good things about him but at least he trailblazed you know something that nobody's ever done he was the first mm -hmm. black president and you know what at least he did something he went out of the norm he did things that nobody ever did um you know Thurgood Marshall did something that nobody ever did and so we have to go off of things that nobody's ever done and at least say, I did it, you know, and go right. out of that, you know, mm -hmm. perspective. And now we have the first female vice president, you know, mm -hmm. um, Kamala Harris, and at least say, I did that, you know. And so what do you think that we need to continue to, you know, instill into our kids, or even into our older generation too, because 
you know, now our older generation feels like, oh, well, I'm done. I'm finished. This is it. <laughs> and <laughs> I don't have oh, nothing else to do. Wipe my hands. I'm done. You know, um, and, and just ex- instilling them to know, you know what? It's not over yet. We got stuff that we still have to clean up. You know, we still got stuff that we have to finish here. You know, right. I would say um, not just the young generation, but I'm a firm believer is that it's never too late. Um, so I believe, like like you said, the older generation is like, I'm done. Like I did my part, whatever, whatever. But I know I've met a lot of old people that still have hopes and dreams of things they want to accomplish. So I first of all, it's just never too late to do anything you put your mind to. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But that, it, and that, but that, that's the issue with a lot of the young, the young uh, people that I have encountered is that a lot of them don't believe in themselves because some of the adults have given up on them. Yeah. And so, yeah. yeah and so I'm in, I'm in, you know, the, the, uh, Mr. Lazo Turner Bay, who is next to me, him and I are in the trenches. So we you like Nikki you are you are you are a extraordinary individual because oh thank you <laughs> you welcome your focus you have your vision you're mm-hmm. moving in your passion but then we have other young men and young women that we encounter that come from a particular environment where they seen drugs killing yeah. uh you know uh different things that that's what they're that's what they're taking in and mm-hmm. so now we come about and we're like like uh, uh, uh Cynthia and Patricia we are coming in now trying to actually persuade these individuals who have been you know mm-hmm. brainwashed with this negative stuff and trying to show them hey yeah you can be a Nikki you know who starts your own brand <laughs> or you can be a little Tyrone that started his own uh steam cleaning company or own you know, mm-hmm. uh, mobile detailing company. And so, and that's the thing, now that I'm talking, you know, it made me realize that that's what we need to do, Cynthia. We need to do a platform where we celebrate young people who right. have become entrepreneurs. Yes. So other young people, see what we just said prior to was perception. And if we can bring all these young individuals out and show that these individuals started their own business they had an idea and then when other young people see them and they'll say man i had an idea and then now their their dreams now become somewhat can become a reality right. and so that's right. what we need to do yeah. yeah yeah i totally agree and i think um we don't celebrate like you said we don't celebrate um our young men and women enough we don't yeah. give them accolades we don't you know even express ourselves to them hey you know I'm so thankful that you have completed you know uh fully to get your degree yeah <laughs> I'm and I'm gonna take you back I'm on thankful that. that you completed well, you, can <laughs> you know see, but that's the problem that I face so I graduated from Liberty University and I actually graduated like a semester early. And so I graduated in December. Uh, well, I was that I still walked in 2019, but I graduated in 2018. And I remember when I graduated, of course, like my parents, my family were like so excited. Like I finished, they were really proud of me. But a lot of people that I encountered, it was like, okay, like, what are you going to do next? And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going to host some, uh, a fashion show in June. I'm going to launch my clothing line. And so many people, older people I encountered were like, Ooh, don't you want to go to grad school? And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with grad school. You know, grad school is great, but I knew that's not what I wanted to do. And so a lot of people are like, well, why don't you go to grad school? Like, oh, why don't you wait to start your business? Like, why don't you get a real job? And I do have a real job. But, you know, they're like, well, why don't you go to grad school to get a better job? Or like, why don't you do this? And I knew I wanted to start my business at a young age. As soon as I was done with school, like, I wanted to go into the field I went to school for. So that discouragement, it, I didn't let it, get to me but so many young people are discouraged like okay they come on an idea and they're like that's done well you need to get a real job how you gonna put the bills with that and don't get me wrong like you still need a, a regular job to support your side hustle until your side hustle becomes your main hustle you know what i'm saying so that you know i'm not discouraging that but so many young people are discouraged from 
following their dreams and doing what they want to do because like oh you can you do this it's like no like you could get it done like the ages now like I wish I started even younger I wish I started writing college but I'm grateful where I'm at now but a lot of young people are discouraged from starting the things they want to do and see that's good. that's good that you didn't give up on your dreams of what you wanted to do <laughs> what other people were saying and mm -hmm. Uh, they don't even know that your clothing line could have just taken off like Tommy Hilfiger or whoever, and mm -hmm. that would have been paying your bills. Then they would have been calling <laughs> right. you and asking, Nikki, can I borrow $50? Uh, no, right. you need to get a job, you know? So you, you can never let anybody tell you what you should do. Now, your parents can give you advice, but if you're grown, of course, you can take it and maybe use it, use a part of it. Maybe not mm -hmm. all of it may apply to you, but you don't never let somebody somebody who doesn't have control of your destiny tell you you should do this you should do that you should get a real job if, if mm -hmm. you feel like this is where god is leading you or this is your journey or whatever you have to follow that regardless of what people think because again they're going to think what they want to think no matter what and when they see you and you didn't mention it and i'm gonna mention it i've seen you on tv several times modeling <laughs> clothing okay yes. people so, <laughs> You know, when they see that, oh, Nikki, how you get on that show? Can I? Mm, no, y'all stop it. Stop it. I mean, I'm just being real. But you can never <laughs> let anybody deter you from what you know you're looking forward to going yeah. forward. Right. Right. And I think, you know, um, going back to um, what we were saying, you know, I think it's because our young men and women are so scared of being able to reach that limitation and saying, well, I'm going to be stopped. I'm going to be stopped. I, I think I'm going to reach that limit, but someone's going to stop me. <laughs> someone's going to stop me there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's because we're not able to find other entrepreneurs that will give them that helping hand, you know? And so we need to be able to collaborate, uh, helping, you know, corporations or helping, you know, organizations that will assist our young men and women. And so I agree with you, Tony, I agree that we need to do something in which they would help um, our young men and women, representatives, senators, leaders that will assist our young men and young women, you know, and not even just right. our young men and women, but any young men or or even our older, <laughs> even our, our, our men and women, it don't matter if they're young or old. Yeah. Um, so going back to, um, to our history, you know, what can we continue to instill nowadays, even to our family units? How can we continue to keep our family units together? You know, because I know that Nikki was saying, you know, I know families, I know it seems like families are broken apart or that it's the norm or that it can seem like, you know, um, and it's not many families that are broken, you know, um, and I think that's a stereotype a lot of times, you know, but what can we continue to do to keep our families together, whether it's, you know, family time, fun time, you know, and do something within our units so we can do something here in, you know, in the Black communities. What can we do to, to keep our families together? Can I, can I answer that question for you? Yeah, definitely. My name is Alonzo Turner Baker. Um, I think we got to do is stop letting people outside of our communities dictate and define our way of life in our community. Mm -hmm. You know, if we look at other ethnic groups and nationality, they help each other out. They look out for each other. They make sure things in their community are done in a certain particular way. You know, they, they, they get together, they have family gatherings, and they do all the things to relive their culture, maybe 100 years, 200 years, and things like that, they keep those things ingrained in the community even now. But when we do it, the first thing somebody outside say to us, oh, that's reverse racism. Or 
You can't give that person a job because you know them, that's nepotism. Well, they do it every day, all day. And the problem becomes, in our community, we look down upon doing that with one another, when in fact, that's the way we get to the top, is we look out for each other. You know, uh, uh, Anthony Wolf been home longer than me. I just come home after doing 31 years, six months, and 15 days. Mm -hmm. I haven't been home 100 days yet. But he's helping me reintroduce myself back into the community. So I, we as a people got to stop letting outside individuals who don't look like us, who don't have our interests at heart, who don't come from our cultural historical background, define our way of life. We got to stop letting them tell us what to do, how to do it. Stop letting them tell us how to spend our money, how to make our clothes, how to eat our food. We got to stop letting them define things for us. Okay, you have advice, but stay outside the house. Let us deal with this here first, mm -hmm. and then we we'll, we we'll allow you to maybe commentary. But right now, we got to deal with the things going on in our house, and I think that's what we got to do as a people. Stop letting outsiders tell us how to live our life, how to believe, how to identify ourselves, how to dress, how to spend our money. Because if we was a nation of people right now, the wealth of the African-American community would make us the eighth richest nation on earth. But because the dollar don't circulate in our community, number one, maybe two times, while in other communities circulate anywhere from eight to 12 times, that's why we find ourselves in that condition we in because we let outside forces dictate our ways of life when in fact we should. And, and sometimes that outside force can be your family. It's not, it's not always outside, but sometimes it is your family. But the one other thing is you have to believe in you regardless. If nobody else don't, you have to believe in you. If, if you don't believe in you, why should anybody else? Why, why should anybody else? That, that's, that's, to me, that's one of the main things. You have to believe in, Luke, in you. And if you have to walk alone to get there, I'm walking. I think we also need to get back into like having fun in families as well. Like I think sometimes as families, people would act, you know, so miserable in their families, but it's like, mm -hmm. I think I was just literally talking to my friend about that the other day. Like I feel like our, well, my generation, we got to experience going all the way from having, you know, pagers and flip phones all the way now to having the iPhone, the right. iPad and stuff like that. Like I remember you know, I barely watched TV growing up. We went outside. My dad would take us outside when it snowed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Even looking outside today, I'm like, wow, I don't see no kids outside. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. no days when I was a kid, you seen everybody going outside. Like, we was up as soon as the snow, 10 in the morning, you know, taking our sleds down and, you know, coming in, making hot chocolate. Like, we just got to get back to, I think, just having fun in families. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have gone away from that. Like, you know, it, there's nothing wrong with the iPad, the iPhone. You can be on your phone. Nobody's saying that. But I think, okay, hey, let's play a game, y'all. Like, hey, well, you know, we can't really go out nowhere. But, like, let's go outside for a little bit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just get back into having fun. That's how. I, that's what I think. Yeah. Um, I agree. I, yeah. I think that I um, I see the support system um, that influences, you know, the culture um, of you know, the communities within. And um, I, I totally agree. Um, it, you know, the support systems that, you know, all of us have. Uh, I know that as a Puerto Rican, we definitely have that support system. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's instilled within us, it's ingrained within us. Um, and it, you know, and I and I see that as well, um, that we just have that support system, you know, and, you know, for all of us, you know, especially when we have that in us to know that family is like the biggest part, you know, how can we continue to love one another and show love to each other? You know, and to move it forward. You know, you may, hey, hey, you made me think about something when you were saying that, right? Um, 
So one of the gentlemen that I helped prove his innocence, I did an interview with him because he's, he's going to be my first story in my book. And what you just said reminded me of something that he said to me during that interview. He said, Tony, each one, go get one. And I understood what he said. He said, you helped me get out. Now I'm going to go back and get one person. He said, if each person went and just got one person, then you could basically make a, a humongous impact in our whole society as far as us as a race. So that's what I think even with this aspect of things, each one get one. So me being an entrepreneur, Mr. Alonzo Turner Bay just said, hey, Mr. Tony Wolf, he's helping me transition back into society. So I'm taking my energy, my time and say, look, this is why we, this is how what goes on now. He gets frustrated with his phone. Man, this got that going for us. I said, man, just uh, what you need to get done. I got, you know what I'm saying? And so that's what we all need to do is everybody, but find that person who wants to make themselves better. Don't waste your energy. I always tell people, don't waste your time and energy on someone who doesn't want to do anything with themselves. Though. Right. That's true. I always say they don't want it. That's in anything. They they have to want it. Yeah. They don't want it. Don't That's good. Me. And I and I like how we ended this right now because this is like a good segment to finish up and to say, hey, you know what? End it with a good heart. <laughs> I like to end it with a really, really good heart. Um, you know what? I like that, Tony. Thank you. You know, each you one get one. I like That's how you right. said that. Thank you. You know, and I want, and I know that Tony's go, going to get each one to get one. So I like how he said that. I might have to, <laughs> I might have to post that on top. If you let me covet that from you. <laughs> yeah, you be, yeah, that I'm saying utilize it. And, and that's <laughs> what I wanted to say. That, I, I wanted to say something to Nikki about um, use that phrase, fun and family. I like that phrase, fun and family. Mm -hmm. So I might have to put that above your pictures on guidance to a good heart today. So, you know, when we make your thank you flyer, so each one get okay. one. But, you know, um, thank you so much for being here um, and for being included and being part of this amazing, you know, um, you know, for us to be able to push forward and, and to be in guidance to a good heart. Truly, both of you are amazing. Both thank of you. you for having me. Yes. Um, thank, thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I hope that both of you continue moving forward. Yeah. And um, I thank you, God and So Good Heart, and all of our participants for being here. Do not forget that there are other shows on Mixed Station. We are not the only ones. Please continue to watch. And listen on YouTube, on podcasts, on TuneIn. And do not forget to listen not only to our station, but to other stations. So, like we always say, you are beautiful. You are lovely. I love you. And thank God that God loves you too. Thank you again. Bye, everybody. Bye.